cause of death, cardiac arrest caused by severe dehydration and shock. She died on December 8, 2018, also in El Paso, Texas. Jacqueline died in Border Patrol custody after being detained with her father and others in the New Mexico desert. Please say her name after me. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. You are here with us. You are here with us. Roxana Hernandez Rodriguez. She was from Honduras. The cause of death, dehydration. She died on May 25th, 2018 in Milan, New Mexico. Roxana was a trans woman who died of cardiac arrest, dehydration after being transferred to a privately run detention center in New Mexico. An independent autopsy released in November of 2018 found the evidence of physical abuse. Please say her name after me. Roxana. Roxana. You are here with us. You are here with us. Claudia Patricia Gomez Gonzalez. She was 20. Also from Guatemala. Her cause of death, fatal shooting by Customs Border Patrol. It was May 23rd, 2018 at Rio Bravo, Texas, where she was shot and killed by Customs Border Patrol. CBP attempted to lie about the incident, saying that she threw rocks at them. This was not true. A video surface of the truth. Please say her name after me, Claudia. Claudia. You are with us. You are with us. So we know we're here, right? We also want to call out elected officials as we all know what time it is. We're asking to support HB 652 to keep ICE out of shelters. Yes. 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 To stop collaboration between ICE and domestic violence shelters. Yes. yes. This is unnecessary. Women who are suffering from domestic violence to not be targeted. We are also here to speak out in opposition of SB 2127. That is what 45 has presented where police officers will work with ICE and be trained to be ICE officials. The bill passed in the Senate on May 6, 2019 and it is currently in the House. So we are demanding that we are coming together in opposition of this bill. We do not need police to be ICE. We're also here to re repeal Senate Bill 4, to speak on our opposition of Senate Bill 4. Senate Bill 4 passed in 2017. 2017 was the same year the city of Dallas led the nation in deportation. That is why we're here today. We're here to remember those that have been targeted, murdered by our government. That's what I had to say. I'm gonna pass it on to Denise. We got a lot of great speakers today. Um, this is Denise, I'll go ahead and let her continue. Hi, my name is Denise Benavides. I am chair of the Welcoming Community for Social and Humanitarian Needs for the City of Dallas. I'm also president of Lula Cup IGP. I'm also a DFW team leader for Music Family Together. I'm an organizer, I'm an activist, I'm a learner, I'm a teacher. Tornillo was a concentration camp in the city that had concentration camps 45 minutes away from El Paso. They had up to 3,000 children held there that currently had sponsors, but they were not releasing them. So myself and five other organizers from Ferguson, from D.C., from El Paso, got together and said enough is enough. So we went during Christmas time. I was there when baby Felipe died, which was very difficult for us because we were there. I was there for a month with my daughter. My daughter at the time was one and a half. She's almost years old now and I was living my life in the middle of the desert surrounded by cotton fields in an RV and I thought it was okay because we knew we were there for we were there to stop the inhumane policy of what this government is doing and so what we did we did several things we basically shut the media down um, but sadly that wasn't the end of that story those kids got shuffled around those kids got taken to other facilities now those children are in Homestead Florida which now is militarized. Homestead is now becoming one of the largest for-profit, for-profit um, incarcerations for children. Tornillo was ran by BCFS, Baptist Children Family <coughs> Services. And if that doesn't disgust you, 
because it sure disgusts me to know that a Baptist organization is taking money while incarcerating children. Now Homestead is also not only for profit, but it's militarized. And so we need to end this. And there's many other facilities like Homestead all around the U.S. and they're growing. They're not stopping. They just made a tent city in El Paso as we speak. And as we speak, there's people there now holding a vigil. And so if we don't rise up, especially here in Dallas, if we don't rise up and end this now, then who will? You know, we're, like Andrew said, we're asking for it. Dallas to not allow cops to act as ICE. My husband's documented, but he's a naturalized citizen. We fear every day that he might get deported because of these disgusting laws. He's been pulled over before in Tarrant County, been asked, where are your papers? And he didn't even understand the question. And so it's very disheartening and very scary. I myself am an impacted person. I have a family member in Michigan that almost got deported. Thank God he wasn't. But it's very scary to know that families are being ripped away and there's people dying. And when I was, let me tell you guys, when I was in Tornillo and the Hela was there, there's people dying that we don't even know about. We saw an ambulance come in and out of that facility and nobody, no media reported that. So the deaths that they report is nothing compared to the deaths that are being silenced, the ones that are being just shuffled in and out. And so we need to stand up to this administration. We need to stand up and ask our city officials to rise up with us and to stand next to us because this cannot happen in our city or anywhere else. So we need to end this. Thank you. Woo.
deserves full equality. Full equality. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right, right now. now. My community. My community. Is somebody. Is somebody. And I deserve. And I deserve. Full equality. Full equality. Right here. Right here.